continuing on from the previous tutorial, we created the handle. We now need to attach that handle to the main part of our sci-fi prop. Our main part and handle are on two separate layers here, and I'm going to keep it that way just for now. The first part of this tutorial is to merge these together and combine these meshes. So to do that, I'm going to move over, zoom in a little bit on this area here. Let's start off by just selecting this edge here, and I'll just hide the main part again, and this edge here. And I'm just going to see how many edges I have, because these are the edges that I want to match to that at the top. So here you can see I've got 10 edges selected. So if I bring back my main prop here and deselect, I'm now going to use the split rings tool here and this split here where I want my splits to start. And then we're going to cut along here to this point here. And then we're going to be able to have, an, have enough geometry in there to match the geometry of the handle to it. Before I do that, I'm just going to hide the handle here and underneath here, I don't need these polys. So I'm going to use my select tool spacebar select and choose faces and I'm just going to choose some of these faces here I think that will be enough just check and I'm just going to delete those faces so this provides me with a space for my handle to fit into so let's go back here and create some cuts into these polys here now so that we can add our geometry so I left click on one of those edges hold shift double click to select all hit space bar cut edges and as we said before we have 10 edges that we need to match so I'm going to place a value of 10 in there and then it will put 10 cuts into those edges hit space bar again and hit connect drop the selection and now I have enough geometry in there. Now I know there's a lot of geometry in here. We're not really trying to optimize geometry in this tutorial. All we're trying to do here is just to get this geometry to match our handle. So with that done, now we can progress and, and try to match these edges together. We could simply now choose these edges here and bridge between the two. However, this distance is, is quite large and we still need to just clean up and align these edges a little bit better. So let's drop that selection there. And we're basically trying to match these edges. So from here to here and so on and so forth. I'll use my slide edges with edge loops on and I'll just try to make sure that I'm fairly close in terms of how these are going to align. So let's just move these over. Now in 3D code, the end point when you slide the edges doesn't always follow along with the rest of it. And so you have to go into the slide vertex and just manually just move that end vertex over in order to get it in line with the rest of them. This brings us a little bit further in line. So let's go back to the select edges again, and let's select these 10 edges, double click in the center of those two outside edges to select everything in between, space bar, transform. And now I'm just gonna help myself here by just moving these edges a little bit closer, just so it's not such a big bridge between those two. So I'm just gonna move over on the X axis here and slide these ones over a little bit closer to that geometry there. This is going to bend around and then into the handle with a nice curve at this point. So that's close enough. I'm going to hit escape and drop the tool. And now I'm a little bit closer to being able to match these together. So for example, these two points on the end here I can simply now right click and hit bridge. And I'm just gonna leave it at the default. Now this geometry isn't perfect at the moment. We'll still need to move this around, but I'm just getting the basics down first. 
and then right click and hit bridge. So it does an initial pass there, uh, pulling these surfaces of these two separate objects together. So I'm just going to hit OK. My object is starting to form as one object. They're still on separate layers, so I can still hide the handle at this point. But eventually we will merge these two together. Now that I've added extra geometry in here, it's important not to overcomplicate the model by continually adding more and more geometry. So after that initial bridging of these, we need to shape the model. So to do that, I'm going to start off by just using my slide vertex here. The next stage is to slide these edges a little bit closer just to even out this distance here on this edge and help with the transition from the main part of the prop into the handle here. So now you can see how we're transitioning from this surface here into the handle surface nicely there. So again, just trying to even these up as best we can. And I'm not worrying about the front, as you notice, or, or the back at this point. Just one stage at a time, just slowly shaping these polys. Now one thing I want to do on here is just move these ones out a little bit. So I'm going to use my select. So just on these ones here, I just want to move these out just a little bit. Just to soften that edge there and that transition into that handle. Escape and drop. Let's move this one over, slide vertex, and probably we'll need to just move these down again just a little bit here just to even these out. Select tool and edges just to, just to show the shape that I'm after here. So let's just delete that one there and how it's transitioning. So this yellow line represents that nice transition from the main part into the handle that I was looking for. Now the, the front here looks bad and, and the back is, is bad, but one step at a time and just to get part of that model just in the ballpark of where you want it to be and then you can always refine later on. And let's concentrate on the back first. So initially I'm not going to worry too much about aligning these points up. I can do that afterwards. I'm going to use my select tool here and we've got too many uh, faces here. So the first thing I'll do is to just move these ones in. So let's choose my transform just to give me a little bit better idea of where I want to go with this. So let's Hold down shift, I'm just going to move the gizmo and then I'm going to use this just to move this over. So the idea is that I get these faces here to kind of merge into to this area here. Now I've got slightly too many faces here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete these faces here. That should help me. So I'll hit escape just to drop that tool and I'll use my edges tool now on these two edges here which is going to align these two together. So I'll use my transform and I'll rotate this gizmo around again just so it kind of aligns up with this edge here and then I will move this one inwards as well. So I'm getting a little bit closer to this edge here. These two edges here and these two edges here are just aligning a little bit closer. It's a little bit like what we did before when we moved those ones out, just to ease that bridge between the main part and the handle. I'm doing exactly the same on this side. Let's take these two again here and just move them in again a little bit more.
Okay, so with that done, let's drop those there and let's bridge between these two. Forget these polys round here, we can sort those out afterwards. Just let's see if we can get this nice transition working first. So here with my edges tool, I'll click this edge and this edge, this one and that one, and right click and hit bridge. Okay, so now those two are connected and I've got a nice transition again. It's not perfect and still need to work on it a little bit, but I've got a nice transition now between those two. So again, back to my slide vertex tool here. Okay, let's escape that, drop that tool. And you can see now that I've got a problem with this and I've got these faces here, these two faces here with an edge between them and I've got no edge to attach those two here. And I've also got no edge here to attach. So I've got to do a little bit of work on this. Let's take these two, uh, let's take this edge first. Drop that one, use my transform. And I'm going to move this one over. Now I can see more clearly what I need to do. I'm going to use my delete polys tool here and delete these two polygons. And the aim here is to divert this row of polys here down this way instead of going across into this area here at the back. And we don't want to add any more edges to this because we don't really want to affect that area. So let's divert this polygon flow in this direction. So I'll do that by choosing the move tool here and make sure my vertex is selected. And I'm going to move this vertex over in this direction. And I'm going to weld this vertex to this vertex here. So when I do that, you can see it welds. You can see now that I'm starting to divert that flow. And what I can do now to make a quad is simply weld this point, this vertex, to this point here. And now I'll just move this one over so it's a little bit clearer to see what's happening. So now you can see that this direction here is going round and all I need to do now is just fill in this quad with the points topology tool here to complete. Now it's not quite tidy yet but the topology now is flowing around nicely and I haven't had to cut any more lines into this area here. So let's just clean up this new geometry that we've just created. And down here, I need to just move these ones in. It's a little bit of a flat surface across these four polys here. I need to add a little, introduce a little bit more of a curve into this. Okay, that's okay for now. It doesn't mean we're stuck with this topology at all. We, we can change things around, but at least we're starting to seal the gap between the main part and the handle and get this nice transition into the handle from the main part of our prop. Next, let's concentrate on the front part. Okay, so on the front section here, let's have a look. We have these three edges here that we can move. So let's just select those so you can see. So we have these three edges here, which we'll just slide forwards so that we can get that nice transition on this part, which is essentially the trigger area into the main body. So let's uh, hit our space bar and transform. And let me just move this into position there and use this gizmo here and slide this over roughly to the place where it's going to transition nicely. I'll hit escape. So now let's start to 
patch this together. So again, I will select these two edges and these two edges here. Right click, bridge. And this time what I've done is I've put a, uh, a, a divide in here of two, which gives me this split. I could have done this manually by using the split tools, but on, in this case, I've just used it directly inside the bridge tool. I've also used this here, which is reverse shape, which has given me, if you notice the um, split on the in the center here, that when I reverse the shape of this convex concave option here, it bends it in. So it makes that transition for me from the main area here down into the handle shape there. So let's say OK to that. And now I'm left with this area. Like we did on the back, show this transition here, this redirection of polyflow here into this area here that we've just created. So all I need to do now is to add a point here so we know how to do that now. We simply go over to the points to poly. I've got my on plane and I will right click on this plane. And this is only to put the point that I need, the extra vertice in the correct area. The left mouse button to place a point there. And let's turn off the plane because that gets in the way. And then 3D coat is trying to tell me, do I want quads here? Right mouse button right mouse button and eventually just right mouse button there to fill in that quad. Now this isn't a particularly nice quad here. Um, it needs a little bit of shaping. Slide vertex tool here and just start to manipulate these points around a little bit more. If you lose your navigation on here, come back and hit this little house icon here um, and it resets your view for you. Let's move on now. We still need to work on the edges here and just clean this up. But let's move on now and have a look at the trigger and block out that trigger geometry. So now I'll go over to my reference again. So I'll choose my reference. I will pin it and then edit image placement and show all. And then when I hit the pin again, it will close down the edit editability of those reference images. So here we are, we can see our trigger reference on here and we can see that we're a little bit off with our polygon here. So I'll just move this one first into position. So select tool, polygons, I'll select those two polygons there and just use my transform, just move this down slightly and rotate that round, something like that. Maybe just push that back a little bit, just so it's facing in the right direction for me to start to extrude this trigger out. So I'll drop that tool there. And with these two still selected, I will hit spacebar inset and at the moment my inset is quite high so I'll just need to reduce that down to something like this and say okay drop that selection and I'm going to take this polygon here and delete it and now I'll take this edge so change over to edge mode take that edge and actually I will take these three edges here and I will use my transform tool over here. Just move it over onto this edge 
and move these three edges roughly to the center line like so okay let's drop that selection now the reason i've done that is because now i'm going to choose these polys here and i'm going to extrude these ones out like so and I want to um, change the shape of this last extrusion now so I'm going to move my widget to the side and then use the scale here to now scale in this direction over here to give me that kind of shape there so the next thing to do here is to delete those two polys that we have selected there whilst they're still selected so hit delete on the keyboard and in the same way that we made the space here for the handle to we're going to do the same on this part of our main body so with the main body selected here i'm going to instead of using the split tool here i'll use the knife tool instead here i'll use the knife tool and i'll go to roughly where i want this to be so let's say zoom in here so I'm, I'm roughly trying to align that up with so I'll click and drag up and double click to make the cut now you notice that on the reference we have this large area here and it also seems to be on on that side so maybe I can just move my um, polys here over a little bit to, to even that up so I'll choose vertices I'll use my rectangular marquee here and drag around bring back my transform tool and just move these across this way a little bit more just to even that up and now I'm getting this flow into this edge here and into this one here which mimics a little bit closer the reference you can do it going over a little bit more something like that let's drop that and drop the selection and now I need to just make that space on the main object. So I'll choose a brush um, and faces and I'll delete those two polys there. Now I can either do a bridge command on this one. Um, I can move these down a little bit, I think. So let's just move these down. And use the bridge tool here to to just bridge between these and have that nice smooth transition again so let's drop that selection and i'm going to with edges selected select this one and this one right click bridge i'll use my division of two again with my reverse shape like so so let's start at the back here and start to select these one at a time like so and repeat that bridge command and it should do all those in one go for me I'm not too happy with this back part or this front part but this one is okay so let's accept that and and just change that geometry around a little bit if if we're not happy with it we can always just reduce that down which is probably what i'm going to do it's, it makes it a little bit easier to edit so at this point all i need to do is come into the edge tool here let's select these two edges here transform move these over this way a little bit and drop that selection there Take these two edges here transform and let's just move those back this way a little bit okay so now those pieces have been connected to the main part of our prop and we have this trigger so just to remind we, we are working on half of this and so when we mirror this over we're going to have double the thickness of this trigger so we don't want it to be too thick so we may have to adjust these polys here just to move them over once we mirror it may look a little bit too too much but we've basically blocked in our trigger there like so so let's just 
turn off our image reference. And now we've successfully brought together the handle and the main part and all we need to do now is just do a little bit more refining work on the handle and some more detailing after merging them together. See you next time.